Welcome to MrCleft.com's quick review of the Civic Literacy Essay for the U.S. Regents, brought to you by Noble Review, concise review books. This is the review page for the U.S. Regents Review. You probably found it, and you probably just clicked on this video because you saw it there. I have some tips about the Civic Literacy Essay right here. We'll talk about all of these, and I'll give you a quick overview of what to expect. This is a brand new U.S. Regents in 2023. And there are certain things that you need to understand about this big essay. The essay functions just like a DBQ that you're very familiar with. It's going to ask you the same questions every year about historical circumstances, about the efforts that are done regarding, you know, by individuals, groups, or governments to address this constitutional or civic issue. And was it successful? Was it not? This essay may be about African-American rights, as you see here. It could be about Native American rights. It can be about women. It can be about imperialism. But the three questions will always remain the same. And that makes it very easy to prepare for it. This particular prototype that is released by the state gives you a series of documents that shows that African-Americans were denied certain rights. You probably are very familiar with a time period known as Reconstruction, where there were three amendments, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, which tried to give more rights to African-Americans by first getting rid of slavery and creating citizenship as well as suffrage rights. However, after Reconstruction, we know that those laws were not enforced in the southern states and it led to a series of uh, certain other laws from the south, such as literacy tests and Jim Crow laws that led to immense discrimination. Well, some reformers and organizations, such as we see here, we have Booker T. Washington, W.E.B. Du Bois, the NAACP, uh, you have others um, here who, such as Thurgood Marshall, who argued on behalf of the Brown family and so many others who were denied rights of going to integrated schools because of separate but equal. And you have sit-ins. All of that leads to what we're going to see as the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which would be something the government did to address the discrimination. These documents are pretty standard documents that you might have seen on other tests or on multiple choice questions, and they're going to give you a scaffolding question after each one. If you see two lines, write three lines. Make sure you get the points. Don't lose out here. These are relatively easy questions. They count as multiple choice questions that would go on your grade. They are very important. You see this one over here? There's a box when teachers grade. You either get the point or you don't get the point. So please take your time. You have three hours for this test. So take your time and write all, all of your answers thoroughly and use two lines, three lines. Do not write a fragment. Do not allow your teacher to take off a point here. Make it very clear and evident. But that's not what you're here for. You're here for the essay. You're here because you're concerned about how to write this thing because it counts for a significant part of your grade on the U.S. regions. Well, they will give you an issue here. The issue that we're looking at here is African-American civil rights, okay? The first question is to describe the historical circumstances. That is a context question. Context means what is going on in the backdrop or right before. For example, if you walked into a school in 2021, you would see kids wearing masks and distancing themselves. The context of that is COVID. If you walked into a voting booth and you saw in the 1890s uh, an African-American citizen being asked where their receipt is for their poll tax, well, you know that the context would be home rule in the South after Reconstruction. So with that in mind, the historical circumstances of this, you're going to get your essay. Here we are. Look, it's an essay. You're going to write your intro all about African-American rights. Um, you're going to address the issue at hand. And then in another paragraph, you're going to write something like this <clears throat> to put African-American civil rights into context. 
One must understand the historical circumstances surrounding the issue. Coming out of the Civil War, the U.S. government passed legislation during Reconstruction, which looked to give more rights to African Americans. These included citizenship rights of the 14th Amendment, suffrage rights of the 15th Amendment. However, after Reconstruction ended in 1877, Southern state governments passed Jim Crow laws, which created an environment of separate but equal also, African Americans were prevented from voting due to literacy tests, poll taxes, grandfather clauses, and the period of home rule also put African Americans into great debt, as many became sharecroppers, which involved farming for only a share of the crop. Now, what I did here is written by a history teacher, right? You are not expected to know every little detail of American history. However, your context could also be the 1960s. You could talk about... Martin Luther King Jr. and the I Have a Dream speech and the protests and the marches in Selma. Um, when they're talking about the context of the issue, the issue here is, is pretty clear. You know, African-American civil rights, I chose to write about earlier times. I can also write about some later times as well. Um, nonetheless, if you address each of these points thoroughly, you should write a great essay. Perhaps now I'm going to talk about individuals, groups, and or governments. When you see and or, try to do all three. Remember, the depth of the essay is what gets you the very high score. So when I think of individuals, groups, and governments, I know I can talk about several such as in the documents. I see um, Booker T. Washington. Right, we see that. We see W. E. B. Du Bois. Not, I didn't see, uh, maybe you got others like Martin Luther King Jr. Okay, we have, um, you could talk Malcolm X, right? Malcolm X, not in the document. And maybe you wanted to talk about um, people who were freedom writers, right? Freedom writers. Maybe you want to talk about, um, you know, there are so many, uh, the NAACP. These are all individuals when it comes to the government. Maybe you want to talk about President Johnson, right? He had the Great Society. Um, he was outspoken on the Civil Rights Act, okay, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. So there is no shortage of people you can talk about for individuals, groups, and parts of the government. And we go back to that question, explain the efforts. Well, a lot of the efforts are in the documents. You could talk about how, we'll move over here to where it was. And um, we know about the Atlanta Compromise of Booker T. Washington, you know, the speech that he gave with the Niagara Movement, the Tallatin 10th. Um, here, of course, I didn't even mention Brown versus the Board of Education, which overturned Plessy versus Ferguson, right? So th these are all things that are done by the government. You could talk about the Supreme Court. I didn't even list it there. Um, individuals are here. And of course, here in the last document, we have the government again. Well, were these efforts successful? Let's go back to the last point here that you would get. And that last point is asking if it is successful. I have seen the way these are graded in the prototypes. And if you write 10,000 words for the first two points and you neglect to address if we were successful or not, you are not going to get the highest score on this essay. So what you're going to do is you're going to put in another paragraph right here at the end. And you're going to talk about whether they were successful or not. And maybe you could talk about both because that's always a good thing to do to show that you can understand both sides. So um, one could argue that the efforts were um, successful because, well, you could talk about the Civil Rights Act. You could talk about the Voting Rights Act. Right, you could talk about integration in schools, and it gives us what we have today. And you can go on for that for sentences. But you could also say they were not successful. Is there racism today? Is there discrimination? Right? We, we talk about um, 
inequality today, you see it on the news and people still speak about it, that today maybe there is still discrimination. Maybe the I have a dream speech is fulfilled. Maybe the I have a dream speech is not fulfilled. Well, we go back to the tips that I give on mrclaff.com and I'm going to tell you about certain things to help you write the better essay. Number one, you have to write about efforts. See that S underlined right there? If we go back to the question, you'll see it right here, very sneaky, explain efforts to address. That's why I'm telling you, individuals, groups, government, lay everything on the table. Do not get lazy and just write some fragmented thing about how Plessy versus Ferguson was overturned by, by Brown versus Board of Education. It's not enough. You want to show the efforts. You can put them in different paragraphs. And I must stress this to you because kids ask me all the time, how many paragraphs should I have? There's no law in the rubric for it. A very easy way to do it would be intro, body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and body paragraph number three. You can do it that way. You could also do two body paragraphs on successful, not successful, and you could do uh, three body paragraphs if you wanted here. There is no limit, but you must make sure you answer plural efforts and you must answer every aspect of this particular um, essay. In addition, what really separates the good from the bad essays, or I should say the fours from the fives, is the extent to which you use your outside information. Outside information is, of course, the information that is not in the documents. Well, if you want your essay to look proper and perfect, you're going to want to cite when you're using the documents. And like it says, you, it, if you want the highest score, you must write all, um, all about at least four of the documents. You can go five. You can go, you can go as many as you want. You can use all of them. When you use the document, you want to cite it as Doc 1. Try your best to come up with a little bit of outside information for every document. And you want to cite that as OI. Okay, OI, OI. And then you go into Doc 2. And then you have, again, outside information. And then you go into Doc 3 and so on and so forth. Because when we as graders see this document, outside information, document, outside information, you want to have four or five bits of outside information at least to show that you grasp the subject matter, that you understand reconstruction. Now, what makes it outside information? Let's go back to the documents. If it's in the document... It's not outside information, but if I go into, let's just say hypothetically here, I have the 14th and 15th Amendment. If you tell me all about equal protection of the law, and you maybe even tell me about the Civil War and the 13th Amendment, that is outside information. If you go in here and you tell me about Booker T. Washington and how he was different than W.E.B. Du Bois, that is outside information. If you go into here and you tell me all about how Plessy versus Ferguson was a decision about Louisiana separate car act and involved the railroads in 1896, that is outside information. If you tell me all about Linda Brown and why the uh, Supreme Court decided to overturn Plessy about how separate but equal is inherently unequal, if you give some details of the case, that is outside information, okay? Same with sit-ins. You could talk about um, how purposely breaking the law is outside information. The freedom riders, okay? People who rode the bus through the South, that's outside information. And um, if you go into the great society here, you can talk about that uh, outside information. Make sure it's relevant. If you talk about the Kennedy assassination, it's probably not that relevant of your outside information. You see the Birmingham protest and the March on Washington. You could, this is where you could talk about the uh, I have a dream speech. Outside information. So again, we go back to your essay. Thorough context. Individuals, groups, parts of the government. In addition, you want to talk about if it was successful or not. And perhaps you want to talk about both. And if your essay, when you leave that 
June test, and you see that you've used document, OI, document, OI, document, OI, and you fill up your blue book or whatever you're writing in, well, you'll feel good about yourself that you have just conquered that civic literacy exam and you've showed New York State that not only can you weave in a bunch of documents, you could use your outside information to show just how, number one, historical circumstances surround the issue, two, the efforts to address it, and three, was it successful or not? Well, for more review, you know you can get free flashcards and review sheets at mrclef.com. You can click on all those review videos, and you can use this particular review sheet to help you conquer the U.S. regions.